Well, good morning, PIC. Today is a very special, special day as we celebrate the graduates from Pozon International Church. Not that you're graduating from Pozon International Church, but we're celebrating as you graduate from your universities, and we are excited that we have this special day set aside just for you. So I would like to start this morning with prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father God, thank you for such a special day as we get to set aside and honor the graduates who are graduating and earning their diplomas from different schools. Father, thank you that we can be together here. Father, I pray for the graduates and just ask for your blessing upon them and their families today as we honor them. Thank you for giving us a special day and thank you that you've made this day. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, PIC. It's my pleasure to read God's word this morning and pray as we start our service. If you have a Bible, you can turn to Colossians 3, 12 to 17. It says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive everyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. Always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you chose us to be holy people. We ask, Lord, that you would clothe us with tender mercy and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. Lord, help us to forgive each other their, our fault, their faults and forgive anyone who offends us because you have forgiven us. Father, close us with your love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Help us to, today to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Father, we pray that you'd give us victory over the coronavirus, that Jesus would stop it and all the pain it has caused. We pray for each isolated PIC believer. Help us to reach out to another believer and connect and support each other in this time of isolation. Father, we pray for the speaker today. Let him teach the word of God clearly. Let the message speak into our hearts to live like Jesus commands believers to live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I have a sermon for the graduates. However, before I get to the sermon, I would like to read the graduates' name, their diploma, and the university that they graduated from. Dr. Tito Ogunbiyi, Doctor of Medicine, Poznan University of Medical Sciences. Dr. Angel Chin, Doctor of Dental Surgery, Poznan University of Medical Sciences. Dr. Memory S. M. Herman, Doctor of Dental Surgery, Poznan University of Medical Sciences. Dr. Tina Grefson, Doctor of Dental Surgery, Poznan University of Medical Sciences. Dr. Andrew Yin, Doctor of Dental Surgery, Poznan University of Medical Sciences. Dr. Bimi Sola Agumbuyede, Doctor of Dental Surgery, Poznan University of Medical Sciences. Ian Vincent Abraham, Bachelor of Science in Finance, Pozan University of Economics and Business, Brenda Navanit, High School graduate of the International School of Poznan, Ashley Tan, High School graduate graduate of Zespol School, Muzicina v Poznaniu. Congratulations. Well, good morning and congratulations to all the graduates that we are celebrating today. Normally, we would be together at the Sheraton Hotel in Poznan. And with that, probably your grandma and grandpa, your mom and dad, your brothers and sisters, your crazy aunts and uncles, all your friends would have traveled to Poznan to celebrate your graduation. So we're gonna do our best to celebrate you virtually online together at our Poznan International Church service this morning. Now, you've accomplished something which maybe a lot of people in the world don't get the opportunity to accomplish. You had the opportunity of an education. Not only did you learn, but you met all the requirements to earn your diploma and you are graduating. Something else that's very, I think, important to highlight, all of you are not only just graduating, but you're graduating in a foreign country. Meaning that you left your family, you left your home, you left your comfort zone, you left your cultures, and you embraced new cultures, new foods, new languages, new professors and made new friends and found Pozen International Church. So we would like to honor you not only for your graduation but for going abroad and just learning many many new wonderful things. 
I think that's going to take and change your life forever. So we applaud you in that. Not only in this or in that, but you also did it through COVID-19, through this world pandemic. So congratulations, you know, from all of us to you on such a job well done. Well, I was preparing the message for you this morning. I was trying to think of a word of encouragement that I can give to you that you might take far beyond Poznan on back to your home country, or maybe if you still reside in Poland, it will be a word of encouragement for you. But the more and more I study the Bible, the more and more I realize just how powerful the Bible is. So I'm hoping what I'll share with you will not only just change you or maybe your family, but knowing that you, with God, you might change the world. And so as I thought about this, I couldn't help but to think of the Old Testament when I looked at four graduates who are in a very similar situation just like you guys were in. These four graduates, they studied abroad just as well. So they had to learn new languages, eat different foods, learn different cultures and customs. They had to adapt in many different ways. However, these four individuals didn't go there on their own will. They were actually taken captive um, by a foreign army back to a foreign land. These four graduates studied law, literature, math. They even had to study magic. You might be able to already identify four of these graduates as we talk about the Old Testament. However, they did have one advantage over, I think, most of us as students. They didn't have to call Uber Eats or maybe go to a school's cafeteria. They were offered the finest foods and wines from the table of the king. At the beginning of their studies, they were given new names. I'll give you the names in just a moment. At the end of your studies, you guys are given an addition to your name, such as PhD or DDS or MD or a BS or an MA or a BA, whatever that might be. However, the captors of these four graduates had one purpose in mind was to train these four individuals to give them a new identity and their thought process and their character and who they would become. We know these four individuals as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, whose names we know still Daniel to Daniel even though his name was changed, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These four students had their lives turned upside down. However, despite everything, all the chaos in the world, they held on tight to two things. They had lost everything, but they kept these two things close and tight to their heart. I would like to give you an encouragement that no matter what the future might hold, no matter if there's another pandemic or a government collapse or chaos or wars or whatever that might be, I want to encourage you to hold tight to these two things just as they did back in the Old Testament, that you will hold on to them tight today, that you might change our world for the better. Those two things, one, their convictions, second, their character. Your convictions are what you hold on to is what is right and what is wrong. How you come about and how you discover your convictions, I want to encourage you to do that through God's word to know God and let him guide and convict your heart so that when you are standing up to something, that your convictions will be there from God's perspective and not just your own perspective. You know, we can develop our convictions from either culture, community, our family, our church, our government, whatever it might be. We can create our own convictions as well. However, I want you to root yourself in the foundation of God and his biblical principles for your convictions. Ruth Graham, the wife of the evangelist Billy Graham, both of them were strong in their convictions. You know, Billy would travel a lot and he was gone a lot away from the family, leaving Ruth to raise the children all by herself. She was being interviewed once and the interviewer asked her, you know, with Billy being gone all the time, did you ever think about divorce? And with convictions, Ruth said, divorce never. Murder? Yes. <laughs> of course, she was joking, but the convictions were there. Her convictions were rooted in God's word. And it's important to develop your convictions from the Bible. Know the Bible, know God's word, know who God is. Develop your relationship with God. So when it comes time to being tested, 
your convictions might stand strong. Daniel and his friends were asked to go against their convictions, to eat the food offered by the king. Now this food was sacrificed and offered to other gods and not to the one true God of Daniel. And so he did not want to compromise his convictions. Let's pick up in Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. Then the king ordered Espenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude of every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them daily amounts of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I'm afraid of my lord the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head. I like how Daniel stood by his convictions, and he did it in a special way. Daniel is very diplomatic, and I think we can learn a lot from Daniel in standing by his convictions. He went to his superior and gave them a solution to the problem at hand. He says, let me eat the fruits and vegetables and drink only water. And of course, the official was very nervous that he might lose his head. However, it worked out in Daniel's favor, so much so that they even changed the diet of all the other students. I'm sure the other students were not happy after eating and drinking from the king's table, but it worked out in Daniel's favor. So much so that God blessed Daniel with wisdom, with knowledge, and understanding that he had never had before. And I want to encourage you, stand for your convictions. Stand for truth. Stand for what is right according to the word of God. Don't be intimidated. Go to your superiors and offer them solutions as well to the problem at hand. But stand for your conviction. Because standing for your conviction, not only will you stand for what is right, but you'll influence and impact those that are around you. For you doctors, many people try to define what life is. I encourage you, life begins at conception. Let God be the author and designer of life and let God finish the life when he designs for it to finish. Not only is it important for you doctors on the value of life, but it's important for you business people as you deal with your businesses and you deal with your dealings. Don't compromise. Stand by your convictions to do what is right. I remember several years ago at the Foundation Bread of Life, we would receive donations from different companies. One company, for example, would give us 500 units on the invoice but they would say, hey, we'll just give you 300 units. You take 300, but 500 is written. So we help you, you help us, everything is good. Well, I had to politely tell the company that we couldn't receive this type of donation unless what we received was actually on the invoice. Well, we had lost a few donors because of that by standing on our convictions. However, God still provided and God still provides even to this day. To give you just an example of God's provisions, just modern day, you know, in mid-March, as this pandemic was really starting to grow, a lot of people were becoming more and more hungry as we were being more and more isolated. So Bread of Life from mid-March up until the end of April was able to distribute more than 34 tons of food. So God still provides in abundance for many, many people. So I encourage you, in your business dealings, God will still provide for you, but do what's right. Stand by your convictions. And it's important for your own life, because when you stand by your convictions, you're going to influence not just those around you, or influence the world. You'll influence your spouse, you'll influence your children, and your children's children. Allow the relationship that you have with God to influence your convictions. Stand upon your convictions as you stand on the authority of God. There's that old famous saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So I encourage you, Christian, know your conviction, stand your ground. 
The second point that I have for you this morning is your character. What makes you who you are, the person that you will become. You know, it's important when you try to know someone or know something, if you try to know God, it's important that you know the attributes or the character of God. If I was to list them for you, which I'm sure you can list them in your head, there's many. You can say God is love, God is just, God is merciful, God is patient, God is joy, God is omnipresent. There's many things, and the list can go on and on and on. But if we were to list your character, what would people say? And I know this quote, I don't know who quoted it, but it says something like this. Character is who you are when nobody is watching. You know, many years ago, I was involved in the Boy Scouts of America, and we were given a scout law, and these attributes of the scout law are really good in character. And I wanna share them with you and hoping that you might apply them to your own life. They come from the Bible. Scout is trustworthy, he is loyal, he's helpful, he's friendly, he's courteous, he's kind, he's obedient, he's thrifty, he's brave, he's clean, and he's reverent. I want you to list your character traits in your own life. Discover what they are. If they're lacking, develop them, improve them, and bring about your character to the character of God. This is what we aim for as Christians. So there's nothing wrong with striving for it and improving ourselves to become more like God and his attributes and his character. Listen to this quote. It says, the purpose of Christianity is not to avoid difficulty, but to produce a character adequate to meet it when it comes. It does not make life easy. Rather, it tries to make us great enough for life. I can't think of something more important than developing our character like God through reading the Bible, knowing the scripture, knowing the characteristics of him. You know, Daniel went through some pretty rough stuff in his educational years from being a prisoner of war or captive taken back to a foreign land, studying under different environments, standing by his convictions, but Daniel kept his character with God. As we move into chapter six, we see that Daniel has been elevated and he's moved up into a position of being one of the top three advisors to King Darius. And being at the top, you know, when you soar like an eagle, you attract hunters. So many people wanted Daniel's position. It was known that Daniel was probably next in line, closest to the king. And so people try to find lots of dirt, like all politicians do, they try to find lots of dirt on Daniel so that they can remove him from the power that he has. They couldn't find any dirt on Daniel, so they decided to change the law of the lands in order to trap Daniel. So they changed the law that you could not pray to any other person but only to the king. Well, when Daniel heard this, he went back home and he prayed. Let's pick up and let's read in Daniel chapter 6. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he has done previously. Now, the law also stipulated that if you pray to anyone other than the king, you'll be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel, knowing that, still went back with his character and still spent time with God and prayed together with him. The politicians caught Daniel in his prayer time, went before the king and said, King, this is the law. You have to punish Daniel with death. Throw him into the lion's den. It broke the heart of the king because he had knew that he had been tricked. But the law was a law. And he threw Daniel into the lion's den. But Daniel did not die. And when the king came, Daniel told him that the angels had shut the mouths of the lions. This is what King Darius wrote. He says, in Daniel chapter 6, then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. I want to pause this for a moment. And I want to read that again. Because of one man's character, because of Daniel, his conviction and his character, the king wrote this to everybody in the entire world. So then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, the nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. He says, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, 
people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever, and his kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to no end. He delivers and he rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of King Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Talk about a powerful impact because of your character for Daniel for doing what was right with his God, with our God, with the God. He changed the entire world. The king wrote to all the people in all the lands of who God is. So you graduates this morning, I encourage you, stand by your convictions, stand by your character. You will not only change and impact your life and your family life and your children's and your children's children, but you will change the world as we know it. God used a king here to tell the story of Daniel. God can use a king or a president to tell your story of your awesome God, which is the God, which is our awesome God, which is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I encourage you, stand by your convictions, stand with your character, and serve the Lord. Graduates, as you go about into this world, this world is full of wonderful things. I encourage you, have fun with your convictions, have fun with your character, stand for what is right, stand for your faith, stand for God. Let's pray together, and I'd like to pray for you graduates as well. Our Father God, thank you for this day that you have made. Father, thank you for every single individual, especially those that are graduating. Thank you for their life. Thank you for knitting them together in their mother's womb. Thank you for their family. Thank you for their encouragement that received from so many family members, from friends, and from church. Father, we ask for your blessing upon them. Father, we ask that you take them into the next chapter of life, that you would give them your wisdom, your knowledge, and help them to understand things just like Daniel never did before. Father, we ask that you help them to stand on their convictions, stand on their character. Father, help them to serve you and to serve you alone. Father, help them to keep the faith. Father, help them in the next chapter of life as they work to serve you. Father, provide them with good employers and good employees. Father, provide them with good businesses and good hospitals and good doctors. Father, allow them to be mentored by some wonderful godly people to continue to proclaim your name. Father, thank you for this morning that we can come before you to celebrate the graduates at Pozon International Church. And Father, thank you again for your love. And we ask for your blessing upon all of these people in your name. Amen. And now we have a very exciting slideshow for you graduates and for your family members. I know you guys will enjoy it. Thank you so much for sending in your different photos and your memories. So my wife Brooke has put this together, especially for you. So enjoy and have a wonderful time reminiscing about your days as a student and also enjoy your day as a graduate. God bless you guys. Enjoy the slideshow.
we would like to give each person a moment where you're at around the world to spend some time in prayer with God. And so Christian will lead us in an instrumental song, Amazing Grace. So I give you a moment now where you can pray where you're at and I'll close us in prayer. Father God, thank you for this day that you've made. And Father, we, we rejoice in it because you've made it, but we also rejoice with all the graduates. Father, we rejoice that even though we have this pandemic amongst us, we can still celebrate one another. Father, thank you for the gift of education. Thank you for the schools that everyone was able to go to. And Father, as the graduates prepare to travel abroad or remain in Poland, Father, we ask that you keep them safe and protect them continue to guide them and watch over them. And Father, I pray the same for all the PIC members around the world. Keep them safe and bless them. Let them be a blessing to the neighbors that they might know the love of Christ. So we thank you for your love and we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we bring our service to a close, I would like to bless you guys. Not only do I want to bless the graduates, but also your mom and dad, your extended relatives, your friends, other family members, and also all those around the world. I bless you with this. I pray the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord to make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. We'll see you again next Sunday.